When do you consider a console officially dead? Is it when the games are no longer being made for the system? Or if the system itself is no longer made? For me, it's neither of those things. I consider a console dead when its network infrastructure service is shut down. And in the case of the original Xbox, that date was in April of 2010. But what about Sony? Sony launched its online networking service in August of 2002, three months before Xbox Live in North America. This year at E3, the highlight of the PlayStation booth was the competition arena. Those people who were lucky enough to be at the show got to check out two amazing online-enabled games for the PlayStation 2. It's easy to conclude that Sony quickly scrambled to get to market before Microsoft and Xbox Live. But the truth is, then Sony Corporation President Kaz Harai admitted that Sony had studied the online markets for years before the introduction of their infrastructure. And in Japan, Sony launched its networking service for the PlayStation 2 one year prior to Xbox Live in 2001. Sony's PS2 implementation was crude. The original model PlayStation 2 did not come with built-in Ethernet, and for $40, the online pack came complete with a network adapter that would attach to the expansion port of your PS2 and a disc for configuring your network. Furthermore, unlike Xbox Live, Sony did not provide any dedicated service for their online services. Instead, that responsibility was placed on the game publisher. The Sony PlayStation 2 is still the most successful console of all time with over 150 million units sold. Now, when the online service was introduced by Sony in 2002 in North America, they were very much aware of the mod chip scene and the ability to play backups. And to counter this online and to counter cheating and hacking, they introduced an authentication service known as DNAS or DNAS for short. The Dynamic Network Authentication System or DNAS works by receiving information about your PlayStation 2, the game you are playing, what type of copy protection the game uses and other specific game rules. This is all done to verify that you aren't breaking any rules stated in the online user agreement such as hacking or cheating. Even using a third party network adapter was not supported by DNAS and would fail the authentication check. DNAS was introduced in the Sony PlayStation 2 games after 2003 and was shut down in March of 2016. This meant any online game that needed to connect to DNAS to authenticate would no longer work. Later model PlayStation 2s like the PS2 Slim have built-in Ethernet, as does the Sony PSX CDR that I reviewed in a previous video. So that poses the question, with the demise of DNAS in 2016, is it still possible to get your Sony PS2 online and play PS2 games online in 2018? The answer is yes. Let's take a look at a couple of different ways to play online games with your Sony PlayStation 2 in 2018. The first method is to use Xlink Kai. This is known as tunneling software that allows you to connect LAN games over the internet to anyone around the world. Now, I covered Xlink Kai in a previous video for the original Xbox and showed you how many people are still playing Halo 2, Counter-Strike and other original Xbox games. And because online PlayStation 2 games usually have LAN support as well, that means the PlayStation 2 can run under Xlink Kai. Now, in order to use Xlink Kai with your PlayStation 2, it must be on the same network and you need to configure your network. Now, in order to do this, you usually need the network online access disk, but unfortunately, these are hard to find and also they're not really needed anymore. What you can use is a copy of SOCOM 2 or Star Wars Battlefront. From here, you should be able to connect your network via the settings. Just follow through the instructions in order to get your network saved onto a memory card. Once you have your network settings configured and saved onto your memory card, go ahead and log into Xlink Kai, load up the game that you're interested in playing, and then click on Show Metrics. You should see that your PS2 should appear in the list of consoles. This means you're all set up and ready to play. Now, if not, make sure your PS2 network settings are configured correctly. 
So let's take a look and see if people are actually playing online games with their PlayStation 2. The only game that people are consistently playing on X-Link Kai is SOCOM 2. If you've never heard of SOCOM 2, it's a third-person tactical shooter that was released in 2003. It won the title of one of the best online games for the PlayStation 2, and deservedly so. It was a blast to play back in the day, and it's no surprise that people are still playing it in 2018. Now my session on X-Link Kai had about 30 users playing SOCOM 2. I played a bunch of games, and the network latency was very low, and in general, the game played really well. Worse, however, were my skills. They were pretty bad. It definitely takes some getting used to to get back into this game. So if you had nostalgia for this game or ever enjoyed playing it back in the day, SOCOM 2 may be worth revisiting. It's all there, complete with the trash talk in the chat as well. It's important to be aware that DNS essentially was just a set of servers with IP addresses that performed the validation and authentication checks. Sony simply turned off these servers in 2016. And if you try to connect to an online PS2 game, it will fail the DNS check, usually with a host not found error. So another method to play online PS2 games is to bypass the DNS authentication check simply by pointing a DNS to a custom server that will emulate the DNS authentication and send back a successful result in order to allow the game online. This is a master list of games that all have custom DNS entries. Now I tried a few of these myself and unfortunately did not have much luck, with the only game that worked was Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. Another resource, the website known as ps2onlinegaming.com, has additional information about custom DNS entries, but in the end I was only able to get one game to work, so I can only assume that these custom DNS servers are no longer online. Or if it's something that I missed on my end, and you are familiar with this approach to getting PS2 games online, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be really interested in pursuing this further. What if you didn't care about the games, but you did want to run Linux and do some basic web browsing? Well, you can do that as well. NetSurf is an open source web browser that's quite established. This is version 3.1 that was released in 2014, complete with Black Rhino Linux running on the PlayStation 2. You will need to plug in a mouse and keyboard for this to be useful, and be warned, the Linux distribution takes a good 5-7 to seven minutes to load on my PS2, as this slim model does not have a built-in hard drive. NetSurf overall is a pretty fast browser considering the age of the PlayStation 2, with the biggest problem being that HTTPS is not supported. And with the majority of sites on HTTPS, means that you can only access a very small handful of websites. Just like any old web browser, this is not very useful. But if you are looking to download files directly to your PS2 or do some very basic web browsing, this isn't a bad way to do it. So in conclusion, just like the original Xbox, the PlayStation 2 continues to be played online in 2018 with things like X-Link tunneling software, as well as DNS hacks in order to bypass or circumvent things like GameSpy and DNAS. And that's really cool to see that people are still playing their PlayStation 2s online in 2018. Now, I will say that there's only a very small pocket of people that continue to use their PS2s online. This is very much a niche thing these days, but it certainly was fun going back and revisiting this. This was a question that 
many people had asked me to look at after I did the original Xbox Online in 2018 video. People were asking me about, well, what about the PlayStation 2? So guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at the PlayStation 2 Online in 2018. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Is this something you're interested in revisiting at some point? Did you like playing SOCOM 2 back in the day and you want to go back into it? Check out the X-Link Kai SOCOM 2 group. It's a lot of fun. I jumped in a bunch of matches over the week and had so much fun playing that game again. I love playing SOCOM 2 and it's really worth revisiting if you did play the game back in the day or if you've never experienced SOCOM 2. It's a very fun and awesome tactical shooter that is worth your time to go back and check out. Well guys, that will do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below again what you thought about this video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.